What's good, everybody? What's good? What's good? Hey, I'm here doing a few shirts, like 12 of them for a client. Um, they have their own business, so I'm doing some uh, some prints. It's got the logo on it um, on the back and then on the front, left chest uh, logo. Looks pretty dope. Um, I am using the new, uh, well, it's not new, but uh, the Stahl's Hottronics. Uh, the Fusion IQ, this thing is smooth. It's so damn smooth. Um, it beats um, working with my clamshell here, uh, for sure. The only thing I wish it had was an automatic um, was an automatic open. Because it's a swing away, it's not going to have that. But um, I think later on, maybe pretty soon, I'm going to get like a a really nice auto open. I've been looking at uh, heat uh, heat press nation, and the only thing that's bad about them is that they have nothing in stock. And um, I have a feeling that a lot of the a lot of the stuff like from like China that's a lot of the stuff is made in China. Um, no matter how good the quality is and whatnot, a lot of it's made in China. And with all these tariffs and embargoes going on. Um, I just kind of feel like the prices of these things are going to go up and the availability of these things are going to go up. But this thing right here is dope. My major feature that I that I decided on was the pull-out drawer. I always felt like you need a pull-out drawer. Um, it just, it's a necessity. Other big uh, improvement is the, uh, the 16 by 20. It allows you to put your shirts out um, and lay them out, you know, really nice. Um, so you can kind of find your center a lot better uh, when you're working with a 15 by 15 it's a little bit harder a little bit harder to do that um, but I've mastered the 15 by 15 and it's good to go you don't need a lot of you don't need to put a lot of pressure when you clamp it uh, like the 15 by 15 or something that's clamshell you got to have a lot of uh, Sometimes, depending on your uh, the pressure, you gotta put a lot of pressure on it. But this thing, it works smooth. Only complaint that I have is, uh, here, let me see. Only complaint that I have is, uh, it takes a, it takes quite a long time to, to get, to heat up. Um, not such a big deal because I can plan out, like I did today, I can plan out, um, I can plan out how I'm going to do my job and get everything printed. So when I was about when I was about ninety percent way of the uh, ninety percent done with cutting out this vinyl, I turned it on and it was ready to go. Yeah, I say about ninety percent way, ninety uh, percent done. Um, I was I turned this on and it was ready to go way before I was ready to cut. But yeah, this thing is dope, man. It's dope. I haven't had any issues with the ghosting or anything like that, but I haven't done any sublimation or anything. I was this close to getting into sublimation, but then the fact that you can't really sublimate on dark shirts. What's up? Thank you. The fact that you can't sublimate on dark shirts is a negative. To me, that's a big negative for uh, for sublimation. You gotta I mean, you gotta find like walkarounds and, and things like that to uh, to sublimate. Like I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna try. Um, the only other option at that point would be go would be to go DTG, and DTG is not. It's not a cost-effective um, option. 
for a lot of people. Um, it's just my opinion. Could be wrong, but the cost and the maintenance for DTG is it's pretty big. You know, it's pretty big. Um, just making sure this is centered. So this is a nice job. This is um this is a job that I actually did for my client was actually I was his client. <laughs> and I'm gonna tell you why. So I had somebody come and install these racks here on the garage so I can get get some stuff off the floor. I need to get more stuff off the floor so I can install these, this big, uh, what do you call it? Eight foot, uh, it's 30 inches deep, but eight feet. I'm gonna get another one that's gonna go along this wall here. So I need to get more stuff off the floor, but when he came to install those racks, cause that's what his business does, um, he was like, he saw my equipment. And he was like, oh shoot, you make shirts? I said, yeah. And he was like, man, that's like, super professional he was like look i was he said look i'm i'm looking at a um I'm looking at a website to get some shirts printed but it's going to take a long time because of the coronavirus stuff and um he was like you know could you do could you do uh could you do me like a custom job this is what i want to do with his logos for his business so i said yeah again i can do it just tell me what you want you know, I knock it out. So the first thing I did when um, when pricing, I went on the website and I put in his logos on the website. Uh, I think it was like Custom Ink, and um, did the front and back. You know, the, the mock up generator and to see that the pricing was going to be. And I think they wanted like twenty seven a shirt. So all in all, it would have been like two seventy something. So I told him, I said, Hey, look, I can do it for two fifty, um, and you can get it. Uh, as soon as I get the shirts in, I'll you know I'll work on it. And he said, "Yeah, let's do it." So, he sent me fifty on Cash App. I told him I wanted the deposit. Um, he sent the deposit on Cash App. I really didn't need to do that. I don't think because you know he's pretty vetted. But you know in this business, you don't work for free. You know what I mean, like. In this business, you don't work for free. Hold on, these assholes on these damn ATVs. But yeah, um, you know, he's vetted. You know, he's got his own business. He just did my business. They got great reviews. So I didn't feel like he was going to rip me off per se, but the rule of thumb is if you're going to do custom jobs, always make sure you get a deposit and your deposit is non-refundable. And make sure you state that. Make sure you state that when you're asking for your deposit. And you got to put it in writing. So you got to put it in writing, email, whatever it is. You can protect yourself because if not, you can end up getting screwed over. So that's it, man. All these shirts are done. You got a few more shirts to make today. I'm not going to do it right now because I'm done cutting. I got to get on the Glowforge, start that thing up. We got a couple orders on that. And the Glowforge is making me money, son. Um, pretty soon it's going to be paid off. And um, yeah, I mean, this has been crazy. Absolutely crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. But thank you for rocking with me. I'm going to get this video posted up. And uh, I got some formal videos to make. I just have to have time to sit down and actually do it. Because um, I know you guys like the, the good quality videos. Um, the high quality 4K videos. But definitely loving this new heat press. I'm going to do a review on it. Officially, I just wanted to get some, some runs in with it. This is actually my first job where I've had... Uh, a custom client with this many shirts um, to use with this thing because my clamshell <sighs> collecting dust right now um, this thing has served me well though man this thing right here has made me over ten thousand dollars 
uh, in about 12 months. So you do the math on that. That's almost about a thousand dollars a month. And a lot, a lot of people probably say, oh, that's not a lot. That's not a lot. To me, that's a lot because, like I said, I started with $50 and a shirt. And one, um, $50 a shirt and one, uh, one design. So to do that, to go from that to, to being able to afford some of this equipment, to making some of the money that I'm making, and I, quite honestly, man, I'm, I'm not even paying myself, man. I'm, I'm putting literally almost all of it back into the business. The rest of it is staying right in the savings, man. It's staying in the savings, and the rest of it's going right back into the business. Because you have to, you have to invest in yourself. You have to get the right equipment. You got to get good equipment um, when you can, and you can't be afraid to say, "Well, I started off with the uh, with the Tussie." You know, I started off with the Tussie. It cost me about 170 bucks, 160 bucks, something like that, right? It's made me over ten thousand dollars. I can't say at this point, man. You know what? Uh, I don't know, man. I, I just don't know if uh, if, I should, if I should spend two thousand dollars on this heat press, man. I know it's good, but I don't know if I should do it. This is gonna help you. It's not for you. It's for your business to grow it. It should be a no-brainer. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I, that's why I got it. I got the table. I'm trying to get the garage set up. Uh, to, to be in my own workspace because I'm running out of space in my in my um, my studio. Um, I still got like a I still got one of those Cameo um, the Cameo Four Plus the 15 inch cutters still on the box. I, I have to find some place to put it because I've, I've run out of room. Um, I still got the Cricut going, um, so I have to find time to hook that up and be able to play with it to get it going the way I want it to. Um, I don't think that's going to be a big problem here in the future. I think I'm probably going to get to it today. Uh, I just got to have some room and some time to, to mess with it. I know when you get into something new, you have to uh, you got to put some time into it. You got to you got to learn. You got to learn. You got to relearn software. I have played with the Cameo, the Silhouette software a little bit. Um, pretty straightforward, but you know I have to really do some test cuts and do all kinds of stuff with that. Uh, I mainly got that so I can do some really, really wide um, back back art on my shirts um, and also replace some of the existing um, design arts. Well, I would say I would say upgrade and do some bigger designs for my previous uh, artwork. So I'm going to retire some of the artworks that I have or I can, you know, I do like a 12 by 12 um, lion. And this time I'm going to be able to do like something bigger. I'll probably be able to do like a 12 or 13 and be able to do it longer. You know, I'll probably do it, you know, like by, do it like a 12, a true 12 by 16 uh, artwork or a printout. Uh, I think I'm going to start going to that route um, because, yeah, it's worth it, man. And uh, the more you give your customers, the more they're willing to spend and, um, you know, for example, some people say like, "Why'd you take this job for 250?" And this guy wanted 12 shirts, right? So, when I start to think about my average sale on my in my store, I got it. You know, I averaged it down to about 35 dollars. Um, that's spent uh, about 80 percent of the time. The average is about 35 dollars or more. Um, that somebody comes to the store and they buy stuff. So almost every sale I average about $35. Um, so I figured, you know, at the end of, you know, at the end of the week, I should, I could have like right now, I just cleared out like 22 orders and I was kind of bummed out yesterday because I only got one order. Um, cause the business is just, it's ebb and flow, man. Like it's not shit. Fucking wasp. The business, you know, business kind of comes and goes. Some days it can be really, really, um, fucking wasp. Uh, some days it can be really, really busy. And some days you don't have no sales, you know what I mean? Some days you have a lot of sales. So from like yesterday, I had one, uh, one order. I'm lying. I actually had three orders. Uh, because before I shipped off my 22, I had two orders that came in that I, when I got off of work for my 12 hour shift, I said, you know what? I can knock these two out and have them sent to the post office, ship them out same day. And I did that. 
So it ended up being about 24, uh, 24 orders. Um, and then I only got one more after that. So I was like, damn, I only got one more. This morning when I woke up, I had eight orders. Um, so when you think about the average order, when you think about your average, it's about 35 to 40 bucks, you know, that's easy. Like two, making 250 is, is easy. You know, that's like, that's like five shirts, five or six orders, maybe five shirts, five, five or six shirts. Uh, cause my shirts are priced pretty, um, I wouldn't say it's priced high. I think it's priced to what I believe it's worth my time, my effort, my craft that I put into it. Um, and people pay because they see the quality. I use good quality materials. Um, and that's all I work with, man. It's a little bit more expensive, but I feel like if you're going to spend or ask somebody to spend $30, $35, $40, $50 for a shirt, it's got to be, it's got to be freaking amazing. You know what I mean? The quality has to be great. I don't go to Walmart and buy shirts. The only time I go to Walmart to buy shirts, uh, I don't buy them for resale. I go to Walmart and I buy shirts if I want to test out new designs. That way they're like throwaway shirts. Um, I can test designs, see what I like, see what I don't like, and I don't have to waste my inventory of really high quality shirts um, for practice. So I suggest you do that. Um, and you just got you got to take your craft serious. Like how many hours do you put uh, put in a day um, for your business? You know what I mean? Like how many hours a day do you put in for your business? Um, you should at least be putting a minimum, a minimum of one hour. A minimum of one hour a day um, towards your business, your craft, and um, you will get better, and you will see, you will start to see a lot of results, a lot a lot of good results. Um, personally, I put in many hours a day, even when I get off of work and I'm on my twelve hour shifts. I come home, I spend about an hour, um, and I just look over my store, look at the statistics. Not really, actually, I really don't even look at stats. I just look at, okay, what can I improve? Okay, this is not selling so well. Um, let me see if I can uh, reface it. And when I say reface it, let me let me try to get a different look that's being um, promoted out there. So I'll switch it up. I'll take new pictures um, to make it look different and then repost it. Um, I look at um, other artwork designs that I can do. Um, I, I look at what's out there in the market and try to see how I can capitalize on it. It's a lot of things that you can do to be helping your business grow, but you, you can't be lazy. You gotta actually do the work um, to see results. And I'm gonna keep continuing to do the work and hopefully you guys do as well. And um, yeah, man, it's, it's, it's going well. I love it. Hopefully soon I'll be able to quit my job and do this full time, but I gotta pull in some good numbers for that. Plus, your boy's getting into the real estate game. I'm already in a real estate game, but more on that later. You gotta get some properties on my belt. I need passive income. I'm not trying to work for somebody and punch somebody's ticket, somebody's um, clock ticket every day, um, being miserable doing, working for somebody else, man. You know what I mean? My time is valuable. My time is more valuable than, you know, $20, $30 an hour. You know what I'm saying? Like, how valuable is your time? I value my time much more when I'm doing my thing, I'm making my custom orders, and I'm, and I'm being creative when I'm doing what I love versus going to punch somebody's ticket, doing something I don't really uh, enjoy to do with my time. So figure out what's important to you. Figure out how much your time is worth. Um, and figure out what you need to do to get to the next level. But um, everybody's going to move at different speeds. Um, but remember to invest in yourself and don't, don't cheat yourself. Don't cut yourself short. If you know you have enough money to get a, a better heat press, get a better heat press. Do you have to spend and go buy the, the best heat press that's out there? No. But you have to go and you got to look and see, okay, what can I buy that's going to take care of my needs? When I got this Fusion IQ, what I really, really wanted was the auto open. I was this close to getting the, the Hotronics uh, clamshell to auto open. Um, I don't think it had a pullout drawer though. I don't think that one had a pullout. Um, so I had to wait and say, okay, do I want auto open or do I need pullout drawer? Um, which one is more important? 
And ultimately, like I said, I went with the uh, Fusion IQ because it had the swing away and also had the pull out drawer. And I know that's a really good product and I don't have to spend a lot of time. I can do on my clamshell right here where you gotta kinda guess the heat. You gotta have a heat gun to make sure that everything on a platen is freaking uh, heated correctly because on these heat presses, they're not evenly, like it looks smooth and straight and flat, but when you actually look at it, it's really not. There's a lot of little wobbles in it. Uh, that just comes with buying a cheap heat press. The, the whole platen doesn't, um, when you do the four corners in the center, everything is not heated up the same. So when you start doing like things like super color, I was getting really, really frustrated with super color. Um, not, it wasn't their fault. It was because I started realizing that the clamshell, this, this Amazon heat press, it just wasn't the bigger designs that I had. It wasn't getting, it wasn't coming out correctly because I would have to go reheat, reheat, reheat. Uh, to get it all off and I couldn't figure out why and it's because when I got the heat gun I realized that everything around the edges was not heating up to the correct temp so then I had to adjust the heat make it hotter which then I had to be more careful so you don't burn your shirts or mess up the design and so it just got to the point where I was like I can't do this anymore I have artwork and, and um, heat transfers that I need to get pressed and this this thing is just not doing it for me anymore so that's the only reason why I'm not, I'm not fooling with it anymore. But for the other jobs that I do that are kind of standard that I've never had a problem with, that's this thing has made me like $10,000. So I'm not going to throw it away. It still works and acts a little quirky sometimes. But for the, for the, for the big, important jobs, uh, for the most part, I will be using the Fusion IQ because I bought it and it needs to pay itself off. But... Um, Eventually, this uh, this Tussie is going to be replaced by like a Johto or something like that, uh, 16 by 20 auto open, or I might just go with another stalls uh, with another stalls. But this time, I think I want to go with uh, something that has auto open and a pull out drawer. So I'm just going to probably get that Johto or look on the market and see what I can do and uh, get that going. Can't wait. But anyways, I've been talking too long. Catch you guys later. About to get some lunch. Customer shirts are ready and waiting. Peace.